Libre Speed is a self-hosted speed test app you can use to test your speed. Here. 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 What about here? Rather than relying on ad-riddled internet-based speed tests, which only tell you how fast your pipe from here to the outside world is, Libre Speed can be deployed onto any system in your LAN, and you can use it to test the speeds of your internal pipes. Recently, when I was doing the 10 gig network upgrade, for example, it came in extremely handy. Now I have two instances of LibreSpeed deployed at opposite ends of the house, so I can test throughput from different network segments. I've also got one in the UK, which I connect to via Tailscale. Now, since I'm running multi-terabyte backups over that link each night, well, actually they're inc incremental backups, but let's not get bogged down with that right now. It's important for me to have a way to test the throughput easily on that connection. Now I could use iPerf for this, and I absolutely do when I'm at my computer, but there are times where I just want to whip out my phone or open a browser to do a quick and dirty sanity test to check throughput from one client to another. And that's where LibreSpeed absolutely shines in my opinion. Those inland speed tests where you want to check something quickly when iPerf is a bit too complicated for the moment, Let's just say you've upgraded a Wi-Fi access point and you're halfway up a ladder. I'm reaching for my phone and Libre speed out of my pocket. At your desk with nine screens and 10 gig networking, iPerf all the way. Let's say you're in the middle of recording a podcast and can't spare the mental cycles. Libre speed in a browser. Like most things in life, it's about using the right tool for the job at the right moment. So let's take a quick look at LibreSpeed in action, but first I should show you just how darned easy this thing is to deploy as a container. With these self-hosted app spotlights like LibreSpeed today, I'm going to use containers and specifically Docker and all the tooling around it like Compose and the uh, Ansible Docker Compose generator that I made a video about a few months ago. I'm going to use all that tooling to incredibly quickly spin up a brand new LibreSpeed instance just for this video. So let's make a start. I already have LibreSpeed deployed on a different server. And so all I'm going to do is copy the relevant bit of my group vars over, save that, make sure that the domain is, is correct. In this case, I use Z to point to Zoidberg, and then I'll do a just run Zoidberg dash dash tags compose. What this is going to do, it's going to create the docker compose file with the relevant parts into it uh, on the host of Zoidberg. So if I switch to my terminal window and cut out the docker compose file, we can see in here, boom. Now, um, I just spotted in here, there's two Zs. So obviously my local domain on this particular host, I don't need to specify that. So I'll just rerun the Ansible very quickly. And we can just cut this out one more time just to check it's fixed. There we go. So now the next thing I'll do is a DCP pull, Docker Compose pull, that's a bash alias I have. And you can see it's pulling down the image from Linux server. This is a container which the Linux server team have maintained for many years at this point. Uh, I think I contributed to it at one point very briefly, um, very small contribution. But if we look at the logs, so detail is yet another bash alias that I have that monitors this stuff. We can see it generated some entropy right here to do the, the keys and that kind of stuff. Uh, and now we should be able to actually go straight to the IP address of this host and the port that I exposed, and that's it. Now, a speed test app is ostensibly quite a simple thing. right? So I'm connected here through my 10 gig fiber network all the way down to the basement. But this host is only a gigabit host. So let's see what happens. When we run this, we've got a great ping time, one millisecond, very low jitter. Download, we're getting 830. Upload, let's see what we get. Full gigabit speed. Okay, so that's looking good. But LibreSpeed does a little more than this. And you can see, obviously, the results come out at the bottom. And if you really wanted to have a, a public instance of LibreSpeed, you could share this test result with your friends if they cared what your speed was i don't really see the point but hey it's there uh, this one is running this instance of libre speed is running on morpheus which is my primary server now this should be running at 10 gigs so let's just have a look at this boom 10 gig sweet isn't it it's really nice uh, so my download speed is 9800 meg upload speed 9005 2 3 4 500 meg something like that 
with a little bit of loss here and there for processing and, and overheads and stuff, anything over 9,000 I'm perfectly happy with. Whilst I was doing the testing for this video, though, I came across some really interesting limitations. Now, if we look here, this speed test instance is actually just this one. So over here, we've got the IP address and a port for the Libre speed instance. You can see I'm running on port boob. <laughs> I'm pure, I'm pure, Al, I know. 8008, port boob. It's really easy for me to remember. But if I switch over to a different instance, uh, well, it's the same instance of Libre speed, but routed in a different way. So this is running through traffic here. You can see this is the label that I applied. This is running through traffic. Let's just take a quick look at the speed test when I run it through traffic. I'm getting 5,000, not 9,800. What's going on? What about the upload? Good grief. Three, 400 meg? So my, my mind instantly went to trying to figure out what was going on with, uh, with traffic. And so I, I loaded up this Docker stats thing, which lets you look at the various uh, CPU usage of containers as you're doing bits and bobs around on your host. And so if we look at this line, traffic here, the CPU percentage right now is 0%. Now if I click start again on this speed test, we can see this jumps instantly to 150, 200, something like that. And you can see it's running in the background over here. But where it gets really interesting is when it's doing the upload, 300 meg there, super slow, it's only using 20 or 30% of CPU. And so I went spelunking a little bit. I asked around on, on Twitter and I asked a few other folks on the back end. There's, there's a few threads on Reddit about this as well. Nobody really seems to come up with a good explanation. If I, if I connect a direct TCP connection using the IP address and port, as you can see, I get full speed. But if I go through traffic, I have these huge, huge performance penalties. And so the explanation I came up with with a few guys online was that there is some kind of overhead in the TLS. This is, that's the, um, the TLS means the secure certificate up here. So this that's the let's encrypt stuff that traffic's providing for me. There's some huge overhead in, in the processing there with Go. Now I had similar results with Caddy, which is also a Go based reverse proxy. Uh, but I didn't have the same problem with Nginx. So that kind of lends credence to that theory. It's not super important for Libre Speed itself, but if you're exposing this to the internet, you're going to want to use some kind of TLS backed reverse proxy. And so uh, that kind of rules out Caddy and traffic for this purpose. So let's take a little bit of a look at the instance I have running in the UK. This one is running over Tailscale. So this is connected from my laptop here over Tailscale to my remote host, and you can see the performance is really slow. It does give me an idea of things like the ping time and the jitter and stuff like that over the remote link. And where that starts to come in useful is when we start looking at the various different results pages that LibreSpeed offers. This URL here, so you've got the IP address, the port, slash results, slash stats.php, this page gives me all the different results from the last few speed tests. And we can see here, this is the one we just ran through traffic. Um, this one got 5,624 down and 329 up. And if we keep going, we've got 5627, 5267, uh, and 327. But if we go a little further down, we should see there was the previous test where I got the 10 gig, the full 10 gig speeds. And you can see interesting stuff like, you know, IP of the requested client and the user agent, all that kind of stuff. You can actually, if you want to, log this stuff to a database. Now, the Linux server image supports in its uh, documentation, there's a section about databases here. So it supports uh, SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, uh, and you can provide the various different environment variables there. If logging this data is really that important to you. There are other things you can do with this data as well. So uh, you can scrape some of it to Prometheus. So this chap, Brendan Matheson, has actually written a Prometheus Libre Speed exporter. Uh, and this basically uh, plugs into the Libre Speed code and generates a Prometheus compatible scrapable endpoint for uh, Libre Speed. And so you could start then taking these speed test results and plotting them in Grafana and that kind of thing. LibreSpeed also has a command line client. Well, uh, sort of. It's not particularly performant in my 
testing earlier. Uh, I found that using this, there'll be a link to all this stuff in the description down below, by the way. I, I found that the performance of this thing was 20 to 30% of the, of the web browser. I'll give you a very quick demonstration of the CLI. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to use. You can do JSON formatted objects with this thing. So uh, one test I was doing earlier, uh, I gave it the server, the ID of ID number one. Uh, the name was Morpheus, and then the server URL was the IP address, and then boob. And then we we passed that in as a pipe that into the, the command line client. And as you can see, it takes a little bit just to ping the server. It gives you an idea of the performance. It's a little bit slow. And then don't forget, this is the same server from this client where we were seeing 9,000 megabits, not five minutes ago. So there is something weird going on with this CLI tool. I don't know what it is, and I don't really care to dig into it. It's not something I'm going to use an awful lot. Uh, I, Like I said in the intro, I use this when I'm halfway up a ladder trying to test something quickly, or you know, I want to grab my phone and, and do a very quick check. Is the, is the Wi-Fi, you know, what's the throughput like on the Wi-Fi in this specific spot in the building or whatever? And so there are a few other things we can do with customizing the front end of this thing. I don't mount any volumes into my LibreSB container whatsoever. I don't care about the persistence. I don't care about the results, the long-term stuff. Uh, if you do, you'll want to pay attention to the volumes. But for me, I uh, all, all I care about is the here and now. So all I'm going to do to show you this demo is exec into the LibreSB container, go into the app directory and look in the web root folder, which is just here. And in this directory, you can see there's a bunch of different um, examples. So let's just take a look at a couple of them. So if we go to this uh, example page here, like any web server, you can just, if it's in the web root, you can just put the, the URL in directly and it, it should load just fine. And we can see I'm getting full gigabit speeds. Now this is to the instance we span up at the beginning of this video, just to prove to you that it does work at full line speed for even for 10 gig. I'll just add this quickly to Morpheus, which is the 10 gig host I have downstairs. And you can see 9,000, so that's working great. There are other options. So let's take a quick look at the chart option here. Run the speed test. I don't know how useful this one is, but it exists. So the download charts here, latency charts there, right? I think you get the idea. Uh, custom settings is a weird one. I, I think you need to actually customize some settings, which I haven't done because that looks very similar to just the vanilla kind of Libre speed out the box, minus the gauges and, and the progress bar that's on there. Uh, let's have a quick look at the full option. Start. I do particularly like actually the, the full option at the bottom, because you've got this little progress bar, as well as the gauge, which sort of shows you how fast things are going. Super clean, super simple interface. Really appreciate that about this one. Let's, and I'm going to skip gauges because we've basically just looked at gauges here. But let's look at pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think their definition of pretty might be a little different from mine. But uh, it, it does the job, eh? Uh, finally, let's just look at the progress bar. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, okay. So this is the progress of each element of the speed test. Okay, but it's not broken down. I, I was expecting, anyway, I was expecting an overall progress bar as well as a progress bar per test. I don't know how useful some of these examples are. But anyway, you could take a lot of the examples that are in here and customize them, I suppose, if that was your, if that was your speed. Uh, and don't forget, you've also got under the results directory under here as well. You've also got a few other options to look at. We looked at stats earlier, but there's a bunch of other stuff to do with telemetry, particularly when it comes to database stuff. If that's what you're after, if you're trying to build some kind of a system to monitor something for a small business or something like that, then maybe digging into the persistent data side of things and the telemetry might be of more use to you. I'd like to cover more of these types of things in these self-hosted app spotlights. So let me know down in the comments down below what you'd like to see me cover in a future video. You can find more of me over at my podcast at selfhosted.show. And until next time, I've been Alex from KTZ Systems. Thank you so much for watching.